John Garcia, I hope you're doing well. Welcome into the game in T-Town. Doing well, Ryan. How about yourself? Man, I'm good. I'm good. I'm actually uh, I'm down in Orlando, uh, a little bit closer to where you are, man. I, I, uh, there you go. I, I wish I was only about a couple of hours away. I'd just swing by and we'd do dinner or something. <laughs> yeah, it's probably you're probably going to get some rain headed your way, I would imagine. But yeah, uh, yeah welcome to the Sunshine State. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. It met me. It, the Sunshine State met me with a cloud today, so uh, I, I've uh, I'm looking That's out. Part of the I, deal. Okay, and, and, and like you say, I think you've told us before. Just wait a few minutes; it'll change, and, and I think it's okay. doing that right now. So, uh, yeah, John, you're a guy that studies talent. You've watched Alabama develop this talent. Uh, I'm curious if you can give us a just your thoughts. Five games in for Alabama, the way they've handled opponents, the way they've played this season. Just just sort of give me some some overall thoughts on this football team here in Tuscaloosa. Yeah, um, well, the offense is not terrible, uh, especially in the passing game. I think it's, it's just a situation where where do you begin as a defensive coordinator? I think that's, that's the question. You, you can't double any one of these wide receivers. You can't stack the box and play man coverage against these wide receivers. Um, It's a pick your poison that I think Mike Loxley has taken a a big advantage of. Dan Enos deserves credit, Josh Gaddis as well. Um, There's been a a balanced attack. There's been a diverse attack in terms of set, motion, personnel, all of those things. Irv Smith is getting involved now. I mean, it's it's pretty much firing on all cylinders. Um, The running game has come into question some, but I think the direction of this offense is, is just going to lend itself towards more passing um, just because of the personnel uh, and the ability to do so. And, and I think that's the, the, the direction of the game as well. I mean, none of these running backs average 10 carries a game, not Damian Harris, not Najee Harris, Josh Jacobs, et cetera. So um, I think Bama fans are still sort of struggling with, with uh, embracing that to some degree. Um, but, but you can't have it both ways. Um, but for, for the most part, the offense is, is about as good as anyone could have hoped for. And, and still, you know, we, we don't even know. We, we still don't have that four-quarter pedal-to-the-metal look at this Alabama offense. And, and I would guess we might not get it the rest of this month, even though it's October 2nd. I, I don't know if we get that until November 3rd uh, against LSU. I just don't know. Uh, defensively, a lot of the young guys have stepped up. Both safeties have been phenomenal. Uh, I thought that was the bigger question mark talent-wise compared – to corner uh, in replacing the entire secondary because we knew while the names would be different, the talent at corner was, was near off the charts with, with Sertain, the experienced Trevon Diggs, and the experienced Sevion Smith. I think Bama felt good there talent-wise with those three lead guys. At safety, there was a lot more questions. McKinney and Thompson have answered that. Uh, up front, good. Maybe not elite, but very, very good. Quinnen Williams has been the star of that defense, and the linebacker play has, has been good enough. I think there's still something to be desired there, but um, new roles for both Dylan Moses and Mac Wilson have, have taken a little bit longer to adjust to, but nothing that is a true vulnerability in the defense. So offensively and defensively, about as good as you can be. Um, special teams-wise, I think that's a bit of a different story in the kicking game, but I'm no expert there. I think uh, I think Bama just needs more reps. I think you're going to see – more of a concerted effort to get field goals in the air to try to figure this thing out. Because at some point, you're going to need to be uh, reliable in that department. John, is there anything that Alabama can do from a kicking standpoint? Because we're, we're looking at Joseph Budovas, uh correct me if I'm wrong, but he was one of the, what, top two or three kickers in, in, in all of high school football. Uh, it it yep. seems like, to me, it's the pressure of, you know, closing for the New York Yankees. It's kicking for the Crimson Tide, that amount of pressure. It's got to be mental. There's no way this can be physical tools, right? Yeah, I mean, physically, first of all, this is a bigger kid. You know, I I remember standing next to him at the Army Bowl two years ago as an All-American in the same game that that Tua played in and Najee played in and Devontae Smith and Henry Ruggs were all in the same game. Joseph Boulibus was there, too, and I thought, man, this is a kicker? legit six foot 205 210 type of kid so so you you don't think at least on the hoof that leg power would be an issue i mean this kid played other positions in high school as well so he's an athlete first um but all-american kicker 
Uh, number three in the country on 24-7 sports that year at that position, which, you know, we don't have a bunch of guys ranked typically. They're usually all Americans and, and, and guys who are expected to kick for four years at the next level. And that was the expectation for both of us who, who got an extra year, which is, I think, the most interesting part of this whole deal. You know, he was, he was at Bama last year as a blue shirt. So he was there in practice. He was able to participate as much as anyone with the exception of Saturday. So um, it, it cannot be mental or excuse me, it cannot be physical. It has to be mental. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know what the blockage is there. They've tried both guys and it hasn't really worked. And I think uh, you, you just got to keep getting reps because you, you talk about pressure in general. Yeah. That's a, a pressure packed position, but at Alabama has, has there been one pressure kick this year? I don't think so. Uh, so it's tough to imagine simulating that scenario. It, it's hard to do. It's one of those things that you, you need you need live reps in. So I just think it's a matter of keep trotting them out there and, and keeping at it because at some point Bama's going to need to, to be able to rely on that. I know the offense is great right now, and you feel like you can pretty much do whatever you want, but um, logically with, with teenagers and 20-year-olds, at some point it's going to sputter a little bit. Um, so you got to be able to take three points when it's available. Um, and, and I think uh, reps are, are going to be the only thing to, to physically – it's like when you're in a hitting slump in baseball, you just got to keep swinging. You got to hit your way out of it, shoot your way out of it in basketball. I think uh, Joseph Bulibus and those guys have to kick their way out of it uh, for Alabama. John, I know we're only in one month. This is this is one month. Matter of fact, I think yesterday was the anniversary of, of Alabama playing Louisville for one month. We've only seen a little bit of what this offense is capable of. We know it's going to be dynamic. John, that's got to be paying off on the recruiting front, right? I mean, I mean, kids, to me, if you're an offensive guy, why would there not be a line here on McFarland Boulevard just just going down University Boulevard and going, hey, please take me? <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's looking that way, especially offensively. Um, a lot of these guys that are, are committed uh, couldn't be more thrilled with their decision. You know, if, if there's a commitment who ends up going to another school one i think it'll be on defense but two i don't know if it'll be his choice i'll leave it at that um because offensively i mean these guys are chomping at the bit to get into this system um the offensive line is is going well with recruiting the skill guys the, the positions have gone well there's still a couple there to be had and i think um the board is is kind of stacked at the top with blue chips with five stars I actually saw the number one running back in the country play Saturday evening at IMG Academy, Trey Sanders, a kid who was once committed to Alabama. And he was talking to me about Benny Snell. He said, yeah, I've really been watching uh, watching him play. And I'm like, oh, okay, so you've been watching a lot of Kentucky? He's like, no, just him. And he was like, the team I've been watching play is Alabama. I'm like, oh, so, you know, so you're still following on. He goes, he goes, I don't know if I could say this. He goes, hell yeah, I've been watching Alabama. <laughs> so. <laughs> Uh, that offense has, has just created uh, just a whole new dynamic for every position, even the ones where it's been traditionally great, like running back. So, um, and, and he's talking about, oh, I'm working on my game, trying to catch passes better, being a more well-rounded back. Alabama's offense and these new age offenses that demand that are, are, are filtering down to the high school level. Just like we see quarterbacks come in as ready as ever before. Look at all the freshmen and sophomores starting around the country. These other positions are, are starting to do that as well. So it's resonating with kids at a lot of different levels offensively uh, in terms of recruiting. Uh, the difference is Alabama's got over 20 commitments already and can't just say yes to everybody. They've got to be very selective on offense with five, six, seven spots left total. We know offensive line is going to be a big priority. Running back and Trey Sanders, who we just talked about, is a, a big priority. Maybe one more wide receiver, but that's kind of it on offense. So while kids are very excited about it, Alabama has the luxury of being very selective at this point. But uh, in the next little bit, it should pick up. Uh, and at wide receiver, uh, Wondell Robinson, who some people think is Jalen Waddle 2.0, uh, he's coming off the board very soon. Alabama, Ohio State, Nebraska, kind of the final three there. So that'll be an interesting decision from, from another uh, state of Kentucky guy where Bama's done pretty well on the trail. Of late, so yeah, it, the offensive impact is doing what we would think um, it, it is doing on the recruiting trail, and and the tangible results should be in uh, sooner rather than later. 
We're going to have to get you on for 30 minutes at some point, uh, m- maybe in the bye week or, or maybe it's Tennessee or, or homecoming week, uh, because there's so many questions. I'm not even sure how I've got to get to all these, but let me, let me see if I can squeeze in a few more. Everybody wants to me to ask you about Clay Webb. Uh, what, what, it, what's the latest? Can you give us anything? Have you got any tips? I know this young man doesn't do a lot of media. Uh, have you heard anything from the Clay Webb uh, camp? Yeah, um, he's he's doing his due diligence. I know we've said that for such a long time, and he's been a priority for such a long time. But but the Bama side of this is you feel good because mom has been able to get to Alabama twice. Believe it or not, even though he's from Oxford, not very far from Tuscaloosa, mom had never been to a Bama game, a Bama home game. Um, that changed this year, I believe, against Arkansas State, and then again against Texas A&M. So Alabama was able... Uh, to string multiple visits together unofficially with Clay Webb and uh, his mother. He's a single-parent home kid, so so that relationship is really key in the recruitment of of the five-star and top offensive prospect in the state of Alabama. Um, and those were unofficial visits. So the good news is that if and when he takes an official visit to Alabama, that'll be a third trip in which mom accompanies him, and that one will be 48 hours on Alabama's dime, all of those those good good things. And I think – you could probably expect that later in the season. And, and I think the Iron Bowl, especially since he's considering Auburn, could be that weekend. It, it looks like Bama's building up to a huge official visit weekend during the Iron Bowl. Trey Sanders, who we just talked about, is visiting that week. Five-star offensive lineman Evan Neal is visiting that week. So it wouldn't surprise me if they try to stack all of that with Clay Webb. So Alabama is is in this thing. It has tangible success with him. But Auburn, as well as Georgia, maybe most importantly Georgia, is absolutely in this as well. And and he's talked about committing in December forever. It's already October. We're we're two months away from that point. So I don't see him ending the process sooner uh, and coming off the board just to do so. I think he takes the allotment of the time. So if Bama gets him on campus for that official at the end of November, you got to feel good about three visits during the season from your number one kid in state plus mom, at a need position. You know, Bama needs centers. Uh, There's not a very clear, okay, it's going to go to this guy after this year. That's not very clear. So in terms of playing time, in terms of everything a recruit could want, Clay Webb has that opportunity at Alabama, and they're selling it extremely hard. So they've got a great chance, as good a chance as anyone. Georgia, probably the top threat. Auburn, still very much in the ballgame, too. John, when you look at all these new assistant coaches, I think we've got a little bit more sample size than, than we did maybe the last time we spoke. It, it's, you know, in the midst of high school football. G- give me your thoughts on all these new assistant coaches. What is it, uh, eight and a half, nine months? Uh, we've got a pretty good run of, of what these guys are going to be like. Uh, you attach them the word Alabama. Certainly, you know, I believe I could recruit for Alabama, but uh, these guys are much better uh, with elite recruiters. Kind of kind of give me your thoughts over all these coaches, assistant coaches uh, working uh, the recruiting trail. Yeah, I think you've seen a little bit of everything from this group. You've seen some some old school approaches, some some down home, you know, hey, I'm really excited about you, smaller smaller net casted approaches from guys like Pete Golding, guys like Carl Scott who have such great ties to certain states like Mississippi for Golding, Texas for Carl Scott. You've seen Bama had success in each of those states already uh, to end last cycle and certainly in this cycle with a lot of prospects still on the board. You've had some strong carryover effect as well. Um, kids in the Northeast, Josh Gaddis established many solid relationships. And the only receiver Bama has right now coming from New Jersey with John Mechie. The, uh, the only uh, Northeastern lineman Alabama has, Antonio Alfano, coming from New Jersey, a guy that Gaddis was very close to when he was at Penn State. So you're seeing some crossover effect, the ability to close at a new program. And then you're seeing some classic This guy's produced great players, plus he's at Alabama now, so it's going to be great and easy to recruit. That's where you're seeing from from Craig Kuligowski, the defensive line coach. At some point, Alabama may have to turn away for a four-star, blue-chip-type defensive lineman because they've they've hit on so many important prospects. Justin E. Boydby in Atlanta, monster prospect, five-star candidate, Alfano, who we just mentioned, five-star candidate up in Jersey. You've got in-state guys committed uh, with D.J. Dale from Clay Chalk, well, Kevin Harris from Georgia, speed rusher. So Bama's done a little bit of everything at D-line. Kuligowski has, has become a very big part of that, and there's a lot of big fish left on the D-line, and we just talked about the lack of spots available. 
So it's going to be tough for, for him to navigate that. But his track record of NFL guys, plus him being at Alabama and, and, and showing signs already of why he's so highly regarded with the, the progression of a guy like Quinn and Williams, all of that is factoring in um, very, very nicely on the recruiting trail. Um, we mentioned Gaddis. Uh, he's, he's kind of the new age social media guy, putting things out very publicly. A couple of other assistants have dabbled at that. And then the sleeper of the group, to me, is, is Jeff Banks. You don't think of a special teams guy as, as a great recruiter or even a guy who you, you see on the trail a ton, but he has been that for Alabama. Um, emphasis in Texas, Arizona, the West Coast as well. You're seeing Alabama in the running for a lot of big-time kids on the West Coast, and not just in California where, where it's Tosh Lupoi territory. We're seeing uh, Southern California guys, Arizona, West Texas guys, where Jeff Banks has, has been important to Alabama in this 2019 cycle, but but maybe his best job so far was holding on and, and confirming and closing Jalen Waddle, who was one of his top targets at Texas A&M before he got the Bama, Bama gig. So that was a big crossover uh, for, for Jeff Banks, getting him out of Texas. And then Danny Enos hasn't had to do a whole bunch right now because he's got commitments in, in 2019 from uh, Talia Tengavailoa, Paul Tyson, as well as 2020 with Floridian uh, Carson Beck. So quarterback's uh, job is a little bit easier there on the trail but Banks has been kind of the sleeper I think all the other guys have kind of found their niche to this point we're finishing up here with John Garcia there's no way that we could squeeze in a comprehensive recruiting report we try to get as much as we can accomplish in 15 to 20 minutes but another great way to connect with John for one on the Twitter account it's straight up it's at John Garcia underscore junior available there uh, find him on the Crimson and Blue Chips podcast that's posted. John, is that every Tuesday and Thursday? Is that right? Is it still every Tuesday and Thursday? You know, it's three shows a week. Uh, we, we go Tuesday, Thursday more, more times than not now um, because the season's so busy. But you'll get a few a week either way. Okay, so so three a week. Uh, download it on iTunes. Find him on YouTube, Crimson and Blue Chips podcast. It's CB, C-A-B-C podcast uh, there on the Twitter account. John Garcia, man, I'm so thankful that you're part of the show. Thank you again for allowing us to tap into your expertise here on the game. Uh, it's greatly appreciated. Anytime. Always, got, always good to be on in Tuscaloosa via Orlando. How about that?